Welcome, dear friends. Look around you. There are stories of struggle, of setbacks, of despair. But I stand here today to proclaim a message of hope, a message of comeback. Whether you're battling in your family, your health, your finances, or your relationships, I want you to know that God is planning your comeback. You may have been knocked down, beaten, and bruised by life's trials. You may have been told that you'll never make it, that you're not strong enough. But I'm here to tell you that it's time for a turnaround. It's time to rise from the ashes, to shake off the doubt and fear, and to claim the comeback that God has in store for you. Our God is a God of comebacks. He doesn't give up on anyone, no matter how far they've fallen. Whether you're battling addiction, dealing with past mistakes, or facing insurmountable odds, God is ready to lead you to victory. With the power of the Holy Spirit, every family, every marriage, every situation can experience a comeback. So, if you've been praying for a turnaround, if you've been longing for a fresh start, then listen closely. In the moments ahead, I'll be sharing with you essential biblical principles that will prepare you for the comeback of a lifetime. But remember, it's not enough to just watch. You must engage. You must apply these principles to your life. So, my brothers and sisters, if you're ready to embrace your comeback, if you're ready to step into the fullness of God's promises, then join me on this journey. Hit that like button and subscribe to our channel, and let's walk together towards the turnaround that awaits us. Imagine, for a moment, the sight of a child taking their first steps. They wobble, they stumble, and inevitably, they fall. But as parents, we don't scold them for falling. Instead, we encourage them to get back up and try again. Why? Because we know that falling is a part of the learning process. In the same way, my friends, God sees your struggles, your falls, and He's there urging you to rise once more. Life has knocked you down, perhaps more times than you can count. You faced setbacks, disappointments, and unfairness. But I'm here to remind you today, it's time to rise. A setback is merely a setup for a comeback. You may be down, but you're not out because we serve a comeback God. Quitting may seem like the easy way out, but you're not one to give up. Even when you're knocked down, remember Micah 7, verse 8? When I fall, I shall arise. God will never say it's over until you win. So, my friend, if you find yourself knocked down, get up. The righteous may fall seven times, but they rise again. The pain of quitting, the pain of regret, is far greater than the pain of perseverance. God is saying to you today, persevere and I will reward you. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep showing up. Keep pushing forward. So, my brothers and sisters, as we journey through the comeback God has planned for us, remember this. Your turnaround is guaranteed. No matter how many times you fall, no matter how hard the process may be, God is with you, cheering you on. And as we delve into the biblical truths ahead, may you find strength, courage, and unwavering faith in the midst of your comeback. Our first tip, my friends, is anchored in the timeless wisdom of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, a passage that illuminates the essence of faith. It speaks of faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But what does this mean for us in our everyday lives? Picture this. You're navigating through life's storms, facing challenges that seem insurmountable. It's in these moments that faith becomes not just a concept, but a lifeline. Faith isn't merely a passive belief. It's an active trust in the unseen, 
a firm confidence that God's promises hold true even when our circumstances scream otherwise. When the bills pile up, when illness strikes, when relationships falter, it's easy to feel like God is distant, like His promises are out of reach. But it's precisely in these moments of doubt and despair that we're called to embrace faith like never before. It's a bold declaration that despite the odds, despite the naysayers, we choose to believe that God is faithful, that His word is true, and that His plans for us are good. Embracing faith isn't about denying reality or pretending that life is perfect. It's about facing our challenges head on armed with the unwavering belief that God is with us every step of the way. It's about clinging to His promises, even when the world says it's futile. It's about trusting that He who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion. If I were to ask you, my dear friend, are you walking in faith or are you walking by sight? Are you walking according to the will purpose, and plan of God for your life, or are you simply trusting and hoping things will turn out? In moments of decision, in the face of uncertainty, we long for a sign, a confirmation from God Himself. Should I pursue this relationship? Should I accept that job offer? Should I make that investment? These are the crossroads where faith and sight collide. But here's the truth, my friends. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's a principle as old as time, yet as relevant as ever. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's about believing in the unseen, trusting in the unknown, even when it defies logic. Faith isn't about having all the answers or seeing the outcome before taking the first step. It's about taking the plunge, making the choice, and trusting that God's purpose will prevail. Even when we can't see the way forward, even when the path seems obscured, we can rest assured that God is in control. So, my dear friends, as we embark on this journey of faith, may we do so with a renewed sense of conviction. Let us embrace faith like never before, knowing that in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. And as we lean into His promises, may we discover a peace that surpasses all understanding and a hope that anchors our souls. Our second tip is a cornerstone of spiritual strength, staying connected to the source of all wisdom and power, God Himself. In Philippians 4, verses 6, verse 7, the Apostle Paul urges us to present our requests to God through prayer with thanksgiving. This simple yet profound act of communion with the divine opens the door to His peace, which transcends all understanding. Prayer isn't just a one-way conversation. It's a lifeline that connects us to the heart of God. It's a sacred space where we pour out our hopes, fears, and dreams before our Heavenly Father, knowing that He hears us and cares deeply for us. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to neglect this vital practice, but it's precisely in those moments of stillness before God that we find solace and strength. But prayer is only one side of the coin. In Joshua 1, verse 8, God instructs Joshua to meditate on his word day and night. This isn't just a suggestion. It's a commandment with profound implications for our spiritual lives. God's word isn't just a collection of ancient texts. It's a living, breathing testimony to his character, his promises, and His unfailing love for us. By immersing ourselves in Scripture, we not only gain wisdom and insight for life's journey, but we also cultivate a deeper intimacy with God Himself. His Word becomes a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us through the darkest valleys and the highest peaks. It's through prayer 
and his word that we find direction, comfort, and assurance in his unfailing presence. So, my dear friends, let us heed the timeless wisdom of Scripture and the call to prayer. Let us stay connected to God through the simple yet profound acts of communion with Him. In prayer, let us pour out our hearts before Him, knowing that He hears and answers us according to His perfect will. And in His Word, let us find nourishment for our souls, guidance for our journey, and the assurance of His unchanging love. Our third tip is a lesson in patience and trust. Trusting God's timing even when it seems delayed. In Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, we're reminded that there's a time for everything under heaven. This timeless truth challenges us to relinquish our desire for immediate results and instead place our trust in the divine timing of God. Waiting is never easy, especially in a world that values instant gratification. We live in a culture where we want everything fast, from fast food to fast internet. But God operates on a different time to ball, one that is perfect, sovereign, and ultimately for our good. So often, we find ourselves grappling with unanswered prayers, unfulfilled dreams, and seemingly endless waiting periods. In those moments, it's tempting to grow discouraged, to doubt God's goodness, or to take matters into our own hands. But the truth is, God's delays are not denials. They are divine appointments designed to refine our character and deepen our trust in Him. But why does God make us wait? It's a tough question with a simple answer. Sometimes, He makes us wait because He's God. He knows more than we do. He's all-knowing and all-loving. His decision to make us wait stems from His love for us and His desire to build our faith and deepen our relationship with Him. When we say God is building our faith, we're really saying He's building our relationship with Him. He wants us to be mature enough to handle His promises when they come to fruition. He knows the perfect timing for every aspect of our lives, even when we may not understand it. His timing is always perfect, never too late or too early. So, what do we do while we wait? We worship. In the waiting, we continue to worship God, to give Him thanks and to pray. We acknowledge His worthiness, His sovereignty, and His goodness, even when we don't see the answers we're longing for. For in our waiting, we realize that He is still worthy of our praise. My friends, as we navigate the waiting seasons of life, let us trust in God's perfect timing. Let us surrender our timelines and agendas to His sovereign will, knowing that He who promised is faithful to fulfill His promises in His perfect time. And as we wait, let us continue to worship Him, for He is worthy of all praise and adoration. As we journey through seasons of waiting, let us remember the story of Abraham and Sarah, who waited decades for the fulfillment of God's promise of a child. Though they faced moments of doubt and despair, they ultimately trusted in God's faithfulness, and He proved Himself faithful in His perfect timing. So, my dear friends, let us embrace the truth that God's timing is always perfect, even when it seems delayed to our finite minds. Let us surrender our timely nines and agendas to His sovereign will, knowing that He who promised is faithful to fulfill His promises in His perfect time. As we wait upon the Lord, let us do so with patience, faith, and unwavering trust, knowing that our breakthrough is on the horizon. Our fourth tip is a powerful reminder from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, where we're encouraged to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. 
Practicing gratitude, even in the midst of trials, is a transformative act that shifts our perspective from what's lacking to what's abundant in our lives. It's easy to give thanks when everything is going well, when our lives are filled with joy, success, and abundance. But true gratitude shines brightest in the darkest of times, when we find ourselves in the midst of trials, challenges, and uncertainties. But thanksgiving is not just a response of thanks when something goes your way or you're granted a favor. You see, true thanksgiving is not an outside formality. It's an inside reality. It's your default. True thanksgiving is a default. And it's not something done for you. It's something done inside of you. When the alarm clock rings tomorrow morning, what's your attitude? I've made it a point on purpose every time I hear the alarm clock to thank God. The Bible says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Only a fraction of the human population ever truly thanks God personally. Only a fraction ever truly lives a life of gratitude. It's so easy to start with a complaining attitude, to roll out of bed and start seeing the glass as half empty. But thankfulness is a decision. Am I choosing thankfulness over complaining moment by moment? We all woke up today, but how many of us thanked God for it? What percentage of my prayers are complaints? How much of my time speaking to God is offering thanksgiving out of a heart of gratitude? Conclaiming almost always lacks perspective. Instead of focusing on the goodness and the grace of God in our lives, we get fixated on what we don't have, on what someone else has instead of us. But true, Thanksgiving is when there's more to complain about, but we choose to look for what we can be thankful for. My friends, gratitude is a constant mindset of thankfulness. It's more than just saying thank you every once in a while to God or to people. It's an attitude of gratitude that you make as your lifestyle. True thanksgiving is when we choose to thank God for what we do have, even in the midst of trials. So, let us cultivate a spirit of true thankfulness before God rewards before God heals, in the midst of the headaches, before God brings wholeness, every day can be a day of thanksgiving. Don't let a day go by without thanking God for His mercy and His grace to us in Christ. Our fifth and final tip is a call to stand firm in hope even when all seems lost. In Romans 12, verse 12, we're urged to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. This admonition reminds us that hope is not just wishful thinking. It's a confident expectation in the goodness and faithfulness of God, even in the darkest of times. Life is filled with moments of uncertainty, adversity, and despair. We face trials that shake us to our core, leaving us questioning our purpose, our faith, and our future. But it's precisely in these moments that our hope in God becomes our anchor, our steadfast assurance that He is working all things together for our good. Standing firm in hope requires courage, perseverance, and unwavering faith. It means choosing to trust God's promises even when circumstances suggest otherwise. It means refusing to give in to despair or doubt, knowing that our God is greater than any challenge we may face. The story of Joseph serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of standing firm in hope. Despite being sold into slavery, falsely accused and imprisoned, Joseph never lost hope in God's plan for his life. And in the end, God turned his trials into triumphs, using him to save his family and fulfill his purposes. So, my friends, 
Let us stand firm in hope, knowing that our God is faithful to His promises. Let us rejoice in hope, even in the midst of tribulation. For we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And as we persevere in hope, may we be reminded of the words of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Friends, as we draw near to the conclusion of today's sermon, I want to imprint this truth upon your hearts. God's turnaround for your life is imminent, yet it's not merely about waiting idly. It's about actively preparing our hearts and minds for the wondrous work He is about to unveil. Now is the time to rise in unwavering faith, to forge an unbreakable bond with our Creator, and to entrust our lives to His divine timing. Let us not merely hope, but confidently expect the fulfillment of His promises. Embrace faith with every fiber of your being for it is the cornerstone of our journey toward the miraculous. Stay connected to God through fervent prayer and the nourishment of His Word, drawing strength and wisdom from His infinite grace. In the face of adversity, let us not falter, but instead practice gratitude, for it is the key that unlocks the door to His abundant blessings. Surrender your plans, your fears, and your doubts to His sovereignty, knowing that His ways are higher and His thoughts are greater than ours. And as we stand on the precipice of divine intervention, let's declare with unwavering resolve that we are ready. Ready for the incredible comeback that God has promised. Ready to witness His glory manifested in our lives. So, my dear friends, let us prepare our hearts. Let us prepare our minds, for the turnaround is near, and it is nothing short of extraordinary. Now, my dear friends, I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Let us bow our heads and open our hearts as we commune with our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and anticipation. We thank you for your unwavering love, your boundless grace, and your unending faithfulness. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and in you we place our trust. Lord, as we stand on the threshold of your promised turnaround, we surrender our hopes, our fears, and our dreams into your hands. We acknowledge that your plans for us are good, plans to prosper us are good, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. Father, we ask for the strength to embrace faith like never before, to stay connected to you through fervent prayer and meditation on your word. Grant us the wisdom to trust your perfect timing and the humility to practice gratitude in all circumstances. Lord, we know that your turnaround for our lives is near, and we stand ready to receive it with open hearts and minds. May your presence surround us, your peace sustain us, and your love guide us every step of the way. In your holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Remember, dear friends, that God is saying your turnaround is near. His promises are sure, His timing is perfect, and His love for you knows no bounds. If you believe in your heart that your turnaround is on the horizon, type Amen in the comments below. And as we journey together in faith, I invite you to share your prayer requests in the comments section. Our community is here to support and uplift one another, knowing that when two or more are gathered in His name, He is in our midst. Lastly, if you haven't already, 
I encourage you to subscribe to our channel to stay connected and receive more uplifting messages like this one. Together, let us continue to walk in faith, knowing that our turnaround is indeed near. Thank you for joining us today, and may God's blessings be upon you always.